This video will show you how to create a small, simple model. From the main menu, select Change Project and then select New. Type in a name for the job. The next field is Engineer. In the Detailing Station and several other places within the Engineering Station, it's referred to as a Fabricator. Many detailers do work for more than one fabricator, and each fabricator has a different set of standards. Once a user gets their standards, which include connection types and configurations, set up the way they want, then they can copy these standards from job to job. For the engineering station, we use the term engineer because at this point the fabricator name is usually not known. For now, we'll keep the other settings as they are and click OK. Select Modeling to open the modeling window. It asks for you to name the first view that you're going to create. It's usually best to start at the bottom, so name the view something like Elevation 0-0. Next, lay out some construction lines, which will be your column grid lines. Select the Construction Line Add button over on the left-hand side. At the top of the screen, you'll notice several point locator buttons from which you can choose. The one that is highlighted is called Base Construction Line. Therefore, when you select one of the existing construction lines, a window will open asking you to type in a distance from that construction line to place a new construction line. We'll type in 30-0 for 30 feet 0 inches and click the Add button. A new construction line is placed 30 feet to the right of the existing construction line. Then select Exit. Now select the horizontal construction line and type in 15 feet 0 inches, a repeat factor of 2, click Add, and then Exit. This placed two construction lines at 15 feet apart. Now is a good time to point out the mouse bindings, which is that yellow, white, and green box in the upper left hand corner. This tells you what the middle, left, and right mouse buttons will do. We're still in the Add Construction Line command. Click your right mouse button to return out of the command. So keep an eye on those mouse bindings so that you know what each mouse button will do. You'll notice that those mouse bindings change if you hold down your shift or control key. So you can do nine different things with one click of a mouse. Also, you can zoom in by scrolling your middle mouse button and pan by holding your middle mouse button. Next, you can create views and at the same time label your column rows by selecting the Add Grid Line command in the upper left hand corner. When building a model, good detailing practice is to always work from left to right and bottom to top. Select the lower left intersection and then hover over the upper left intersection. You'll notice a triangle pointing to the left. This will be the direction of the view. When you select the second point, a window will open asking you to name the view. We'll type in A for column line A. There are some settings here where you can create grid bubbles for the column lines. For now, to keep things simple, we'll uncheck finite to make the construction lines infinite. Also, we'll check the depth checkbox so that when you're looking at the view, you're only seeing three feet on each side of the grid line. Create the remaining grid lines the same way. Notice that the New Erection View window remembers your previous selections. Once you're done, remember to right click to return out of the command. Once you have your column rows laid out and labeled, you can start adding columns. Click and hold down the Member Add button to see icons for various types of members that you can add. Select the column icon and then select the location you would like to add your first column. A column edit window opens. You can type in a column size or select the filing cabinet icon to pick a column size. Selecting a column rotation of 90 degrees puts the column web vertical in the plan view on your screen. Under the top end settings, type in the elevation for the top of the column. Place a user base plate at the bottom of the column.
Notice now in the mouse bindings that the middle button is repeat. So you can repeat the same column in other locations by clicking the middle mouse button at each location. Again, remember to right click to return out of the command. Check the depth checkbox and resave the view by selecting the Save View As icon. Next, select the Reference Elevation icon and type 15-0. Now you're at elevation 15-0, so save this view and name it something like TOS Elevation 15-0. Now we can start adding beams by clicking and holding the Member Add button and selecting the Beam icon. Again, remember that you should add member endpoints from left to right and bottom to top. Select the two endpoints for your first beam. After the two points are selected, a beam edit window will open. Type in the beam size. On a side note, if you have a screen resolution similar to mine, which is 1920 by 1080, you may have your OK button covered up by the taskbar. I've found it best to work in SDS2 with the computer's taskbar on the side. To move your taskbar, right click on it and uncheck the lock button. Then you can drag your taskbar over to the side. Then click OK. Again, notice in the mouse bindings that repeat is your middle button. You can repeat that same beam in other locations by middle clicking where the first end of the beam should be placed. We're still in the add beam command so we'll left click 1A and 1B to add our first 30 foot beam. We'll select a size for that beam and then we'll middle click to repeat that same beam at column lines 2 and 3. Then right click to return out of the command. The best way to add infill beams is to first place construction lines at the beam locations. Select the construction line add icon and then select the construction line at grid line 1. Type in 5 foot 0 with a repeat factor of 5. Click OK and exit and then right click to return out of the command. Next click the member add beam icon and select the endpoints for the next beam. It remembers the last beam size that was added, so you can just click OK and then middle click the left end location of the other beams that we want to add, and then right click to return out of the command. There are various ways to create an isometric view. One way is to turn off the depth check, then hold down your shift key. Note that in your mouse bindings that the middle button is now for rotate. Place your cursor over the middle of the structure and then hold down your middle mouse button and move your mouse until you get a good looking isometric view. Zoom in and center it and then click the Save View As icon and name it Isometric or just ISO. One other thing that you can do, which is my preference, is to turn off that big green box. Do this by clicking the Display Options icon and unchecking Terrain. Next, we're going to add a vertical brace. To do this, first select the Open View icon and double click 2. This is the elevation view at column line 2. Next, we'll place a construction line at the beam center line. Select Construction Line Add, then select the line representing the top of the beam. Since it's a W16, we'll type 8 inches and click Add Minus. Next, click Member Add and select the Vertical Brace icon. In this case, in order to select the left end of the brace, we need to click the Point Locator button representing intersection of member line and construction line. Once you select the right end, a Vertical Brace Edit window opens. Give it a size. Go back to your isometric view to see the full structure. 
click the Process and Create Solids icon. You can type a quick key combination of SA on your keyboard to turn everything to solid view. Another option is to select View and then Change All to Solid Opaque. In this case, it doesn't create a connection at the left end of the brace because the default load is too high. You can fix this by double clicking on the brace, unchecking Auto, and change the load to something more reasonable. Finally, I'm going to give you a couple of recommendations for your user options. Go to your computer's taskbar to bring your main menu to the front. Select User Options. Under the Modeling tab, you can change the default color of your construction lines to something that's easier to see. Under the System tab, the Help Browser is also the browser used to display your expanded connection calculations. I've found that Firefox works best. Change this by selecting Other and then browse to the location of your Firefox program. If you don't already have Firefox, it's a free download. That covers the basics of building a model and a couple of setting changes to make your life easier. I hope that you found this video helpful.